Hey everyone, my name is Simsy. How you all doing? Welcome back to some more Hearts of Iron 4 here today on the channel. We're going to be checking out a brand new mod called Cross the Dnieper. We're going to be starting in 2014, going to and leading up to the events of 2022. So, here is the map. It is absolutely massive. So essentially, this entire map is focusing on the Eastern Europe sphere of influence. So we're going to be playing on regular for my first time around. Let's uh, get stuck into it, I suppose. Hopefully we can defend their territorial integrity, but I've heard this can be a difficult mod from time to time. So, across the Dnieper is in beta. So there are some things subject to change. You can even donate to victims if you want. That's kind of cool that they've provided links from that. We're going to be starting January 1st, 2014. And we're going to try and set up our country with, obviously, future foresight of things to come. But here is our internationally recognized territory. Here is the city. Here is... Oh, Hostimal. <laughs> Rip. <laughs> okay. I do love how that there is a massive city on the campaign map. It actually shows you, like, the grandiose of what cities like New York and London should be in Hearts of Iron. Even the details down here in Crimea. Look at this. Because you forget that although it's called the Crimean Peninsula. It's nearly more or less an island there. Okay, so we have protests in the streets. We are currently under the presidential reign of Viktor Yanukovych with 37% support, 38 there. We can actually release Crimea if we want, give it back to the Tatars. I don't think we're going to do that. So, I don't think we can switch any of these laws, governments, and policies. Most of it is done via the focus tree. Press freedom. Interesting. Free trade unions. So, currently it's a free press state. I don't know about that. Neutral policy. Traditional values. That makes sense. Tolerated for now. I'm assuming we don't spend political power here. It's done via the tech tree. We are a, path, a pacifist society. We've got research and production. Oh, nice. We've got the Lviv armored vehicle plants. We've got the Kharkiv motorized stuff. That's where we're going to get probably a lot of our tank designs. Antonov Airways. And we've got various other industrial stuff. All right. Any decisions we can do now? Here is the RADA. The General Assembly. Nothing we really can do here at the moment. Alright, let's build up our intelligence apparatus. We've only got three research slots. Basic infantry. I thought Ukraine produced their own in-house rifle. Was it the Maluk or something? It was a ballpup. Actually, to be fair, we are starting in 2014. It might have been like 2016, 2017 when they ramped up production. Alright, so we've got the BTRs. Got a lot of post-Soviet equipment we have access to. We currently have T90 chassis. Eventually, we'd like to get NATO-style chassis. Your Leopard 2s, your, your Abrams and Challengers. Uh, probably buffing up our artillery is probably not a bad idea. Having a couple of full-on artillery divisions. And I think Navy-wise, it probably wouldn't be a bad idea to focus on submarines to raid in and around the Crimean coast. But I think going with electronic engineering, going with production and construction, because once we're under threat, we want to be able to produce a lot of our in-house stuff. It's going to be quite some time before we build a strong, hard, and resilient economy. We do have access to the international market. Not yet, but we might be able to buy additional supplies from some of our European neighbors. 
If we can start stockpiling early before 2022, that would be ideal as we have eight years to prepare. Resource wise, we're quite a rich country. We have 46 construction factories. 46 civvies. I imagine maybe building sort of west of the Dnieper is quite ideal. I don't think those territories in the far west near Lviv are going to be that much of an issue. All right, we've got 21 military, T90 chassis. It's a bunch we have access to there. So I think building up our basic equipment and support equipment is probably ideal. Aircraft wise, unless we can get F-16s from the Americans or various other NATO aligned countries probably with close air and I think if we're going to build anything as we do have access to a bunch of naval facilities I think we're going to focus on submarines because in real life Ukraine doesn't really have much of a navy what's our stockpile looking at at the moment yikes could be a lot better probably going to build up a bunch of anti-air artillery as well as their KH attack helicopters and aviation is probably going to be the major issue for us and we want to try and counter hit them with artillery so we have 63 divisions so just your basic guard here just curious to see what they're equipped with is that better call Saul? <laughs> it is <laughs> got some IVFs or Saul Goodman rather uh Five tank divisions. BMPs. T-84s. Okay, so at this moment, mostly Soviet equipment. We do have three fleets, which we probably should relocate. Back up here, probably. As they're probably going to take the port of Sevastopol at some point. Air Force, we have 96 small gen 3s okay money wise here is our debt to gdp and i think we'll amass everyone and try and get to the front lines so let's move to the uh, donetsk luhansk territories um i think historically why can't i grab this is it bugging out because it's so big <laughs> We will have um, issues, from what I can remember, near the Odessa and Kharkiv regions. There's going to be some civil unrest, so we might even try and potentially set up some territorial defense. Wait, what's the, what's the best way to grab all these? Because there's so many of them. There we go. So... Let's grab a bunch of these guys and we'll try and set things up. I don't know roughly how large we can have these infantry divisions. Got to keep a watchful eye on Moldova and Transnistria as well. But we're going to be focusing on the enemy to the east for the most part making plans and preparations we'll dig in try and fix our political situation stabilize the region build up and then hopefully we can win this war what's the quote for as long as it takes okay let's make this a bit nicer so 21 apiece Probably not too bad, and then we'll look through assigning various generals. Alright. So, who should be the field marshal? Mm. Alexander Shursky. I think we'll make him the field marshal. And who will be our main commander? Ah, yeah. Valery Zaluzhny. I think we'll chuck him in. Uh, Ruslan Kamachuk. 
I think that's how you say his name. Forgive me for butchering all these names. Um, who else have we got? Victor Korenko? Sure. So, I think we'll set up a area of defense with Zaluzhny down in Odessa to protect the crucial maritime port. Our marines are down there. So we want to protect it. We'll move you over to Luhansk. No, actually Donetsk, and then the other one could be Luhansk. Or maybe we'll just intertwine with the two, because it's such a big area, such a vast region we need to protect. And you can probably move up to the Kharkiv Oblast as well. Okay, things looking good. Reshuffling the command. And already they're starting to mass on the border. Uh-oh. Protests in Kyiv for several re weeks now. Ukrainians have been camping out and protesting in the streets. Arise from your slumber, Ukraine, for a glorious future awaits. These protests are the largest in Ukraine's history as an independent state. And the actions taken now, both by the protesters and the government, will have consequences to come. 25 political power. Nice. There's going to be a lot of these pop-ups by the look of it. That's nice. We can set the stage. Man, Kharkiv is such a big city. Okay, let's move the navy here. Right, sweet. And let's go with Sergei here. And let's, for all future purposes, make the submarines go to the navy there. Then ideally what we can do once the war kicks off, we'll be able to convoy raid and maybe try and sink various other stuff. Okay, how's our fuel going? Not too bad. We have 220 manpower. Okay, so we've got some barricading in Kiev. After Viktor uh, Yanukovych and his cronies have launched a crackdown on the movement. Oh no. The people aren't leaving until Yanukovych does. So he is still currently El Presidente. And. We're still dealing with protesters in the streets. <laughs> what are the Poles doing <laughs> on the western border there? They're not looking to take back Lviv, are they? Or Lvov? You kind of forget, <laughs> after World War II, how much of Poland's shit just got taken. <laughs> they lost Minsk. They lost a bunch of territory to Ukraine and the Baltic states. Oh, God. Oh, here we go. The Battle of Kiev. Today marks the climax of the campaign against the corrupt regime of Viktor Yanukovych and his goons. Clashes have taken out in the streets. Will this ever end or no? So we lose a minus 25% stability, unfortunately. So we need to survive through this. Victory. Hopefully nothing bad will come of this. So Yanukovych has now fled. We regain our base stability and I'm assuming we're going to have a new faction ruling and we're going to gain access to a new part of the focus tree. Nice. Cool. As we're waiting for the separatists to come up. So, protests in the streets has now been complete. The national focus there. As we move to February 2014. The revolution of dignity is now complete. Let's move to consolidate the new government. Which will increase our stability. Oh, wait, what? Why are all my units back in Kiev? 
Oh. <laughs> Did I try to cheese it? And there was a bit of forethought there. Uh, Yulia. Oh, oh, here we go. Little green man. Oh, no. Have taken the port of Sevastopol. They've taken control of the naval base and have moved to take the rest of the peninsula. Dubbed the little green men due to them not having any insignia. Their government has denied <laughs> any collaboration. Oh, you can actually pay, play as Crimea if you want. That'd be kind of cool. Making a Greek slash Tartar Crimean area. Um, so their forces have managed to capture the port of Samirpol. Uh oh. And the fall of Sevastopol has now happened. We will return at some point. Okay, so they declared war upon the autonomous region there. Uh, Yulia Temoshenko has now been released. She is now a free woman. Okay, I don't know much about her. Cool name. Eastern li liberalism grows. So, we're probably going to lose the peninsula now. There's not really too much we can do about this as the Federation is now pushed over. They've already taken parts of it. And, okay, so protests in the east. And we have a new president, or well, acting president, Alexander Chernikov. Can't they see this? What are they doing? Okay, all right. Pet, uh, oh, here we go. Petro Poroshenko has announced his candidacy. Named the Chocolate King <laughs> for his large confectionery empire, Petro Poroshenko, independent MP, has announced his candidacy Candidacy, with the backing of the UDA. Free chocolates for everyone, I suppose. Mmm, delicious. The West has announced sanctions. Great. Okay. <laughs> I think we would rather... More javelins and stingers at this point, but, you know, due to the events in the peninsula, Western organizations such as the EU have drawn up sanctions. Cool. Man, there is such a cool timeline there. These events are really well done. Man, so much detail. Okay, so we'll redraw our area of defense down here, but I think... Technically, some of that area we can't enter now, by the look of it, because the rebellion is about to happen. Damn. <laughs> they thought ahead, because, like, I guess if it spawned as enemy combatant territory, um, they would just capitulate. All right, now that the dust has settled, we need to form an interim government. So, liberal parties that took charge in the Urada. How do we want to build this interim government? Okay, so... Form a government between the two factions. Oh, that's cool that it actually says specifically the historical decision. I'm sure there's some positives and negatives. Give the nationalists key ministerial positions. Yikes! You do get some pretty good stats, though. <laughs> But I'm assuming we want to try and play this historical as we can. To eventually uh, bring in Vladimir Zelensky. Okay, so we can block the North Crimean Canal. <laughs> Such a troll that they did that. Um, cutting off the water so they have to ferry it in. I guess we want to crush the Kharkiv Republic when it pops up. So that must be happening soon, you would think. Okay. So, I guess we just have to wait for things to 
kick off, I suppose. But so far, really enjoying this mod. Super interesting. Oh, we can't even, like, go that far south as well. Yikes. I guess just try and go to the border. So we can't even access the southern half of the country. We can't even get as far south as Kriviri. That's a shame. Hmm. Cheeky mod developers, knowing the exploits. <laughs> okay, let's just try and move. Uh, we've got some anti-anti protests going on. We've got riots in Donetsk. Over the past several days, the situation in the east has deteriorated. Rioters have seized control of some various governmental buildings. Anti-anti my done protests hopefully we can weather the storm gain base stability minus two getting some political power so from donetsk to odeska stuff burns oh no sergey yavla yaroslevi <laughs> defects following the seizure of the port of sebastopol the ukrainian uh, naval commander in chief <laughs> left um i guess we give dennis control Oh, they took part of our navy, I think. We had way more ships than that. Oh, did they yoink it from us? Oh, that's unfortunate. Uh, probably got some spare military factories. Or maybe we should reallocate it a bit. Because at the moment, we've just been sort of building up our basic rifles and support. Maybe we can try focus on some chaffy sh uh, chassis. Some IVFs, some trucks. Various other equipment as well. Because we've only got 19 military factories, maybe we just need to go back and forth between the two. Um, so we'll drop that down a bit. I'm sure we're going to be able to buy rifles and equipment at some point. Okay, let's continue on. Dennis defects? <laughs> oh no! You've got to be kidding me! <laughs> just a day after his appointment as the new Ukrainian naval commander, Dennis has defected. <laughs> Unbelievable scenes. Um, I guess we give it to you. <laughs> sure. Sergey. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so we had 15 ships. So I guess they got seized in the takeover. Anything else we can do here political power wise? No. Okay, so the situation is souring in Kharkiv and Odessa. So, I think things are about to probably kick off soon here. As we head into April 2014, uh, do we want to try and block the water access to the northern Crimean Canal? Sure, let's do that. And we sit in wait with our 60 divisions. I'm actually going to negotiate with Poland to try and get some equipment. At the moment... We only can negotiate with them. So we actually can get some Su-27s, which are a Russian-designed fighter jet. Ukraine's got a... Uh, sorry, uh, Poland's got a bunch of them. So we're going to try and request some of them to build up our air force. Sure, why not? We've got 90 or so at the moment. Um, emboldened by their actions, troops have crossed the border. Putin, Khuilo. I think I've heard that before. Yeah, what is it? It's like, uh, Putin, Khuilo, motherfucker. <laughs> oh, God, and then you hear, hear a spit after it. Um, okay. So, we've got more little green men doing things. All right. So, we are now April... 2014 we've blocked access to the canal we'll try and ensure loyalty here our stability's gone up to 63 which is good slowly but surely gaining political power oh here we will go things have now kicked off so we are now at war with a fair few factions okay so it comes to this. Oh wow, so it's really opened up the tech tree. Oh my god, look at this. Look at this focus tree. This is massive. Focus tree, not tech tree rather. Said. President Poroshenko. 
Um, I guess we do some CT operations firstly. Well, um, we need to make sure these... Oh, wow. Separatist regions don't grow. So I guess we send Zluzhny to retake Odessa back with 20 divisions. He's got to get it down there quickly. Let's move you to Kharkiv. And, yeah. If we can quickly wrap up the rebel forces here in Odessa and Kharkiv first, then we can focus on Luhansk and Donetsk. I guess we'll send those 19 to Luhansk. But we'll see how we go. Because combat is a little bit different in this mod. From what I can remember. And I've read. There's like offensive seasons. You can get some really bad negative buffs. And debuffs if you attack. We've also got 12 more divisions here. Well, let's send you to Hakiv, I think. The quicker we can get this under our control, the better. So, ideally, if we can get to a point where these four rebel regions are, well, not rebelling, that would be ideal. So, let's try and surround them where we can. We've got some enemy defections, unfortunately. Okay, let's focus down in the south here. Wait, where'd my planes go? Oh, okay. That's annoying. Um, please take into consideration that... This mod is in beta and some things are subject to change. I didn't give them... I didn't give the poles my planes, did I? No, I don't think I did that. I, I requested them. Oh, maybe. I think that was a bug. Great. We don't have a navy. We don't have aviation. <laughs> oh, no. And now we have to rely on them. <laughs> okay. Well, let's try and stabilize this region. Is there any events we can do? No. Okay. As you move into May 2014... Yeah, look at this. Look at those, like, negative traits. Yikes. Our army at this point is very green. Green around the gills. So they're now expanding quite quickly. Alright, down in the south, we seem to be doing a lot better. Trying to crush them here in Kharkiv, but we'll see how we go. Okay. How are we going down in Odessa? A bit better. We're more or less just trying to stop them growing. Okay, we might be able to surround a bunch of them here. Oh, nice. We've got 12 divisions here. Well, let's just send them with Serki. I don't really think you're going to do many offensive actions here. You just need to stop them from seizing great swaths of territory. I guess we'll send the two boys up in the plane. <laughs> okay, we can't really fortify any of this stuff just yet. Okay, there was a leaked audio recording. Okay, we're having much better success down in Odessa, which is nice. Oh, no. They seem to have flooded in proper Federation regulars. Ah, uh, yikes. Uh, the elections of the 2014 election. Yeah, we'll go with Poroshenko. We'll go with the historic decision instead of Yulia. Oh, God. All right. Odessa has fallen, which is nice. But unfortunately, those two regions have grown in quite big defiance. Nice. Oh, my God. That took us so long to do that. Um, we'll see how we go. <laughs> this is going to be tough. Okay. So, Odessa is probably going to capitulate. I guess for now, we just try and focus on getting this region under our control. We might need to fall back. 
and let those two in the east essentially secede from us. I don't know, maybe it's historic, well, it historically happened. So maybe it's realistic and sensible for us to not hold on to that territory. But from what I can remember, they crushed the resistance in Harkiv and Odessa, historically. We've got some more units here coming in. Okay. And let's just try and make a front line all the way here and stabilize this push, I think. Oh, no. Unfortunately, Mariupol has fallen. Zeluzhny is the only one that's having great success. Oh, we need to redraw that front line. There we go. He was sitting there twiddling his thumbs a bit. So, the more combat experience we get some of these units, the better. Our equipment's still pretty good. Okay, down in the south here. There's only a couple more units remaining. We just want the rebel province and oblast of Odessa to capitulate, and then we can swing back up. We've lost 8k, they've lost 27, so casualties-wise, we're not doing too bad. Manpower sitting at 87. Probably no need for them at the moment. Let's try and do some offensive actions where we can. But so far, if this goes for too much longer, these rebel provinces might permanently stay before 2022. Yeah, if we could have, if, yeah, if these four provinces and oblasts cement themselves as free and independent, we could have uh, pretty big issues. Okay, I'm surprised they haven't capitulated yet. All right. Ismail, push up here to the Romanian and Moldovan border. Nice. Right. So he's been successful. Yikes. We had some dudes get crushed down in the south. All right. Let's focus down here. So let's send Zuluzhny to Donetsk. He can try and hold that. And we are really struggling to even take Kharkiv. Alright, try and stabilize this front where we can. It's these regular Federation units in the DPR as well. We might be able to do some offensive action here because there doesn't seem to be anyone down here. We might be able to push them back. Nice. There we go. Getting a little bit of a push here. We might get encircled here, though. We might need to fall back. It actually might be better off to properly fall back. Yeah, I think we're going to get cut off. We can focus on the south to try and drag some units, but hang on. I might need to reset all this. So hang on. Stop attacking. And yeah, I need to redo this because this is getting a bit crazy here. So we've managed to reconstitute order in Odessa, but we're having problems here. I think we'll pull everyone back through this corridor. There's going to be a massive encirclement here if we're not careful. So let's go with here. And if we can somehow basically cede that territory, let it go, and then we'll try and make a, a front line and try and stabilize it. I feel like there needs... I think in this mod, you can't just like constantly blitzkrieg to win. <laughs> there needs to be times of peace. And times of war. Times of offensives. Okay, so... Yeah, slightly pull back. We don't need to get overextended there. So let's try and stabilize the front. There we go. Come on, get back. We've got to save our officers and privates here. Get everyone through this corridor. Okay, come on, get out. I'm trying to flee from Gasorivka. Okay, that's a bit better. So at least in... Actually, you know what? I could just make one big front line with everyone. That actually might be better. Because now that we're basically going to be fighting on one big front, it actually might be easier to manage everyone like this. 
and give the 68 in direct control with Zolushny because he's a four-star commander now and then try and like ideally something like that for now we might sacrifice some territory for a better position um, let's go with aiding some refugees there oh nice so we can probably up upgrade our officer cores well ideally come on just like take a tile there oh MH17 the disasters now happened that's pretty bad That was always eerie for me. Like, literally a week before that happened, I did the same thing. Flew over Ukraine. Like, literally a week to the day. Um, so, let's form up here. Back in 2014. Right, cool. There we go. That's a bit better. We've got some units getting surrounded there, but... This would be a bit better to stabilize the front. Damn. Okay. It's just those regular Federation units that are really, really good. Okay. So, unfortunately, you've been caught. We lost 24k to their 32. We also just don't want to capitulate either. They did actually push quite well. Okay. I guess we just try and hold, wait, stabilize the front, and then we'll try and go again. Okay, we're holding now. Okay. Let's make a front line here. And... Dish out some more officer cores. Alexander Sersky. Yep, yeah, sure. Alright, sweet. 62 divisions now. We haven't seen our... Convoys actively raiding. Well, I guess... Well, yeah, maybe they don't have any. Maybe they're not trading at the moment. Oh, damn. If I had a... I can't believe I don't have an Air Force. That sucks so much. <laughs> Not having any air support. It definitely hinders our close air support operations. But so far, August 2014, we've managed to overall stabilize the front. We've not managed to cede any more territory. But it's not looking good here in the east. We've given them a pretty strong foothold. 25k to their 33. Maybe we can just sit here now, try and bide our time. Whittle them down and then we might be able to go on our own counter-offensive. The Great way, uh, Raid. Gaining some army experience. Manpower, command, base support. Nice. We'll wait for things to get back in our favor. Radios have been complete. Nice. Maybe go with a push here. Although it's not in our favor. We might be able to take some territory back. But it's significantly outnumbered. Okay, doing a lot better in the south. Nice. Slava Ukraini. Another Independence Day. Uh, let's go with concentrated industry, I think. Rather than dispersed. I usually actually go disperse, but... Let's go with local militia militias. I think in this scenario, concentrated would be better in theory. Okay, we are taking back some tiles in territory somewhat. Mostly in the south of the country. They have now launched an offensive. Okay, so we're going to have to watch out for that then. So, we've got to watch out near the Mariupol region. Let's 
We do seem to be holding quite well though. No, our casualties are too high though. 66k manpower left. We can't recruit any more divisions yet. Oh, nice. We've reached the Minsk agreements and Minsk protocols. Okay. After di after months of discussion and agreement, we're going to sign the treaty. So that should cease hostilities for now. Oh, no. It instantly broke down. <laughs> Rip. Okay. It was their fault, not ours. Okay. They've launched another offensive in Berokorivka. Okay, we've got some additional reinforcements coming up from here. Let's send them to the front, except for one. We have 72 divisions in active duty. Sweet. All right, let's try and hold the line, lads. Okay, really can't do anything here. Um, can't bring him in. Uh, what can we do? Well, that might be a good idea. Ukraine on the world stage, sure. Okay, let's try and do our own little offensive here. Yeah, mostly we seem to be more successful in the south. We might be able to cut them off down here. Could just make a beeline to Donetsk. <laughs> but we'll see how we go, just trying to cut them off here firstly. There we go. This could be a good push here, potentially. Okay, now we've been cut off ourselves. Yikes. <laughs> Uh-oh. Alright. Just got that division killed, pretty much. Rip. Okay, two steps forward, one step back. 52... Ca oh, wow. Our casualties have actually gone a lot higher. So that has now been complete. Ukraine on the world stage. Nice. If we can get closer to the EU and the West and NATO, that would be ideal. Okay. Probably can reattach this unit here. Uh, let's go with... Command. Get additional special forces attack. Right, let's try and sign the EU Association Agreement. Let's try and buy some more planes and artillery from the Poles, I guess. Get some more of those Sioux aircraft. So Poland has accepted. Nice. There's occasionally gaps that we can exploit. But we're struggling to push in some areas. Okay. Now that's been quite some time in our military factory focus. God, we've gone down to nine. It's because we've lost so much of our industrial base. Let's try and get an expansion of our rights there. That'll bring us closer to the EU, sure. 64k. So we've actually lost 10,000 more. Yikes. Oh, here we go. We've got some units that have overextended. Nice. Let's crush them. Okay. At least we've been haven't pushed to the Dnipro River. So things are a little bit of a stalemate here at the moment. Ironically. And unfortunately, maybe try and push in some of those pockets. Maybe not doing like one big offensive, but just trying to take unclaimed tiles. But so far, historically, 
things are a little bit worse off. They've seized more territory from us. These rebellious separatist regions. Okay, let's try and make a push here again. This time around it might be a bit better. Alright, here we go. There we go. Nice. Much better. Can you try and push to Mariupol? Why are there Belarus units fighting here? Do they really need that? Oh, nice. Come on. You're nearly about to take... Nice. We've retaken it at least. Okay. This push seems to be working a little bit better. Maybe we can surround them here on the coast. That would be ideal. There might be a bunch that we can nab. Yeah, and then try and like push into that. We seem to be doing a lot better against the DPR and Luhansk units, but against like the proper good units, uh, not so much. Oh, hang on, we might be able to get a good encirclement here, come on. Oh, maybe not. They're pretty dug in. How are they getting supply in there? Okay, we've managed to retake the south of our country here. But we can't seem to surround and destroy this tiny little enclave. We seem to be doing better in Donetsk than Kharkiv. Oblast. January now, 2015. Still trying to push here in Yusov. Alright, that's a bit of a better push. Much better. Still have to keep a watchful eye on our manpower. Lost 70k to their 61. To Minsk once more. Um, so we can go with the historical decision. We can refuse, but then they might go to war with us. No, I guess we... Ugh, yikes. I guess we accept. We weren't having a bad push there. Oh, no. So, unfortunately, in this alternative timeline, Kharkiv was uh, added as one of the rebel provinces. Oh, that's really bad, because we've lost a huge access to our industrial base. And our tank factories there as well. Oh, that's pretty bad. Um, we'll see if we can come back from this. I think as well, we might have taken actually more of that Donetsk territory back, potentially. All right, let's try and make a front line here as we go into 2015. We have to deal with these three provinces now. So they're going to be able to launch your attack in 2022. A... A little bit further into our territory. Okay, let's try and expand the Partnership of Peace program. Thanks to Bill. And we can't fortify or do any of this stuff yet. Okay. Uh, Independence Day parades. Sure, let's go with that. Did I read something about <laughs> Transnistria there? <laughs> Continuing the conflict. I never sh never <laughs> a little bit of shelling never hurt anyone. Okay, let's continue with that. The Normandy 4. An interesting after actions report. Okay. Anything else we can do here? Let's go with increased dedicated wham. Yeah, so now this guy's in charge. And these are puppets of the Federation. Okay. So. So far, still playing along the historical trend. We've lost the peninsula. We've lost these three provinces. We'll see how this adds up in the full-scale invasion when things come along. Alright, things could be better then. 
March 2015. But at least the fighting has stopped for now. And this should give us... What? Seven years to make more plans and preparations? Uh, what was down here? Yeah, we actually might be able to get a war annex goal against Transnistria. <laughs> we could probably do with their civilian factories and military now that we've lost essentially three oblasts now, unfortunately. Okay, so we'll make sure that's on aggressive and I guess we sit and wait. We might do some exercises at some point. We'll see. Or are we better off to build up our equipment a bit more? Let's uh, try and purchase some more planes from Poland and use the international arms market to get some more additional air force. We need to build up our aviation. Poland and uh, as if Belarus accepted that. <laughs> okay. So... I don't know when we're going to be able to go back after these three separatist regions, but we'll have to see. Um, prepare for border skirmishes. Sure. Let's spend our political power on both. Let's try and do that. And is that just going to be a constant thing? <laughs> These small little, small little border skirmishes, okay. Oh, Lithuania has provided us with heavy equipment, nice. CTS, uh, CTSO, CSTO are doing some exercises. Why are they getting split those six? Why can't we just re-fix them? All right. So Moldova has declined our offer to invade Transnistria. <laughs> oh, okay. So they are going to refuse it. Well, we can't allow the FR to have troops there on our border. Fine. We'll do it ourselves. <laughs> okay. Well, this is an alternative timeline after all. Well, if Moldova won't deal with it, Zoluzhny will. <laughs> all right. Let's swing everyone over. Now that we have a peace and an armistice there, we can focus here. Right, let's push over the border. Now, in theory... Okay, they're not going to last long. <laughs> nice, okay. So they have now been fully capitulated and incorporated into the territory. <laughs> Ukraine has conquered Transnistria. Okay. Um, yeah, I, just, I guess we just straight up annex it and core it. Sure. Why not? <laughs> A little bit bizarre. Okay. So it's just something we have to keep an eye on. Uh, we can't incorporate it. Occupation decision. Um, was there anything else we can go down here? Oh, what well, is rightfully ours. We can't do that just yet. We can't re-declare war upon those oblasts. So still under the presidential reign of Viktor Poroshenko. Let's switch to martial law in some of our occupied territories. Alright, that's just something you have to keep an eye on. Okay, so we have 36 factories here. Oh, right, all those um, civvies that are being constructed in the west have now been complete and we probably can switch over to military factories now as we're making plans and preparations to build up okay we're gonna try and get elections to the RADA going we can probably dish out some of these commander traits with Alexander Shursky and We'll just sit on the border here and wait. Keep a watchful eye of those skirmishes back and forth, but hopefully we just need to buy our time, build up, get Western material and equipment, and start going down this Ukrainian focus tree. 
Uh, we want to probably, what do you want to start? Decentralization with Poroshenko is probably not a bad idea. And would Belarus give us T64 uh, chassis? Maybe. That would be weird, but I think they might, yeah. Because <laughs> we know what's going to come. We might as well build up our equipment. <laughs> okay, unfortunately, Lithuania declined, however. That's bizarre. Uh, Belarus accepted. Oh, great. Greece defaults on their debts. <laughs> Typical. Uh, increase regional budgets. Probably not a bad idea here. And, all oh, right. So basically our officer corp has now been filled out. We did lose, what, 60, 70 a K in the first war. So we'll try and build that back up. Maybe in some of these regions we can probably convert to military because we've got to basically, from now until the 20s, we need to significantly mobilize and build up our military infrastructure enough to hold, our, uh, hold against the FR, the RF rather. And then basically wait for Western support. Okay, that is now being complete. Let's try and renegotiate with Lithuania. Well, this time around, they give us access to javelins and some basic infantry equipment. Let's go with this. Okay, so they are doing it now. Okay, tech tree wise. Let's go with weapons one. Because at the end of the day, we're going to have to support and supply ourselves okay so we're building up our political power as well so we can spend some of this uh, that's pretty good Mikhailo Zoborowski division attack and defense that's a nice buff we might look for that okay I don't think we need to put anyone on the northern border here just yet we will have to reallocate our divisions at some point military factories are well on the way our political position in the RADA is secure nothing else we can do here at the moment as we move into 2016, yeah, let's go with popular war hero. Servant of the people. Another comedian banger. <laughs> Here we go, Vladimir Zelensky. A teacher who becomes president. <laughs> Must be such a bizarre show to watch. After what's happened. I do remember seeing a jo John Oliver bit about it years ago now, when it happened. Um, right, let's renegotiate with Lithuania to try and just get as much equipment as we can. We need to just try and literally stockpile whatever we can before the inevitable. Nice, we've hit 100k manpower. There is a alliance in the north. It is the 5th of February, 2016. Unfortunately, the three separatist oblasts of Donetsk, Kharkiv, and Luhansk still remain in rebellion. Unfortun unfortunately, in this alternative timeline, we weren't able to retake Kharkiv back, so we've lost a huge tank manufacturing district in the north we obviously still don't control Crimea we're still making plans and preparations to build up for the inevitable invasion working through the focus tree uh, Poroshenko is currently our faction leader El Presidente we've got some spare political power 
We're going to bring in... Uh, what? Which one's the best that we sort of need? Political power numbers. Expect a number factory goods. I wish we could get access to some of these other ones. I think you have to change the, I the, I the ideology otherwise. Alright. We did manage to subdue Odessa and annex and conquer Transnistria. So, I don't know if the entire territory of Kharkiv is worth, well, Transnistria. We have 135k manpower sitting, and we currently have Valery Zaluzhny. He is currently our best active field commander. He's controlling the troops on the Eastern Front. Four five-star commander now. We're currently getting as much equipment and material as we can. Nice. We can get a higher caliber of rifle. Uh, anything else here? Probably go with... Uh, I do kind of want to... Kind of... Out... It's gonna... The thing is, like, do we go with the RF doctrine of just a mass amount of shitty artillery or do we have like a couple highly specialized ones the thing is if we can somehow match their artillery and count hit them back with counter battery that would be ideal we also need anti-air upgrades as well as the RF aviation is going to be absolutely deadly against us we don't have an air force to combat it so javelins stingers whatever we can get and also going to the international market, trying to get in javelins. We've been able to actually negotiate with Belarus to get T90 chassis, T72s as well, which is quite funny. We might be using it against them. Uh, Navy-wise, we're currently focusing on submarines purely, so we can convoy raid their convoys and ships in the Black Sea. Let's go with the Ukraine NATO Commission. Slowly but surely trying to get closer to the West and making plans and preparations. Building up our logistics and supply um, as best we can. But so far, we're in a bit of a time of peace. The Minsk Agreement has been signed. We will need to prepare for cross-border fighting. Lithuania is giving us more equipment. Nice. Uh, which one do I want? Infrastructure and construction speed. That's what they do with that. Okay. We can't go Ukraine home to all. Uh, where else can we go down here? Maybe a need for reform. There's just so much good stuff. Hungary has invested into Ukraine. <laughs> That's a little bit unlike Viktor Orban, but okay. Maybe he's not in charge at this point in time. Who knows? Let's reattach them. Okay. So we've gone back and forth constantly, reshuffling from focusing on support and then weapons to then other equipment. Um, I think we probably want to go down to the left-hand side of the tree. Maybe let's go with Lessons of the Donbass and Lessons of Crimea. Let's go with Improve Anti-Air 2. And we're slowly but surely converting some of our military factories that we've acquired. Maybe getting some more anti-air, focusing on that. Fuel-wise, we're good. Oh, nice. Hoi 4 is released. Oh my god, 2016. Can't wait for Hoi 5 whenever that comes out. Okay, industrial industry. Uh, what do I want to go with? Electronic research, construction, infrastructure. Being able to not rely purely on Western support is probably not a bad idea. The more of our own infrastructure we can get, the better. The Brexit referendum succeeds. Interesting. The need to survive. So, we've got, what? Six, five years or so. I believe there's not an exact time period when the 
full-scale invasion kicks off, but it's something you have to say. Oh, nice. We finally have access to actually recruiting our own divisions. Good. So if we can get a couple hundred of those, that would be ideal. So let's start off with just recruiting some default divisions, and we'll look to edit and customize them a little bit later. So we've got armored divisions, mechanized, airborne, infantry, artillery, militia, Azov, uh, anti... Police force, Donbass, Militia. So let's set them all in Kiev. And if we can sort of grow our numbers a bit, maybe just having some massive cannon fodder divisions might not be too bad. Uh, just briefly looking at the division designer. These aren't terrible. I could purely like make an artillery one though. It probably wouldn't be a bad idea. I think our best bet is, look, if you've got limited aviation, that's an issue. <laughs> Not having air support and Hearts of Iron 4, or close air support, is pretty bad. If you do have a limited navy, I think you're better off going with submarines rather than frigates or destroyers. As we've got a limited manpower population, potentially getting anti-air and artillery divisions is probably the play. And we already do know that their doctrine is going to be mass assault and pretty artillery heavy and attack helicopter, so we're going to need anti-air to, de uh, to deal with that. And yeah, I think we're probably better off actually just getting a bunch of our own in-house artillery where we can, rather than f focusing on highly specialized western ones in such limited amount, because if we... The thing is, if we lose like... One HIMAR unit. Are we better off just to have 10 Shia artillery pieces? You know what I mean? For the cost of one. Okay, September now, 2016. So, we've actually got a bunch of artillery in air. Rocket artillery is good. We could probably swing to... Other stuff. So, we are going to get submarines. One in 2016. One in 2017. Let's try and build up our military infrastructure. We've only got four research at the moment as well. I guess we could go with a different airframe. Okay. So, let's add a bit more of them. Nice. Czechia is investing in our country. Now, if I can have somewhere between... 150, 200 ideally. We might be able to make things work. Okay, let's get a different anti-tank. Let's bring up the Karl Gustav. Let's go with improved artillery. Two, oh no, we need to go with that first. My bad. We can't change our conscription requirement yet. So, it's going to be interesting to see how well we perform in this series when the full war breaks off because I think you can have a far superior time against their specialized forces if you've got these three oblasts fully directly under your control. It just makes things harder. So we'll try and hold the territory where we can. Uh, we're probably going to have to reallocate some units down to the peninsula and then Hey, Donald Trump got elected, okay. Poland's still accepting more stuff. I guess we just try and hold out as long as we can. The longer we can survive, the better. I think that's sort of the point of this series. You sort of just need to hold on for as long as you can, and then you can do your own counter-offensive. We can always use the Nipro as a natural defense barrier if we have to give up the east. Give up the east, everything east of the river. Keep everything of the west. Maybe we get in NATO or something. I don't know. Worst case scenario. But hopefully we can uh, survive until the current start date. But who who knows? Okay, let's start moving those divisions eastward. As it is now December 2016. 
Our manpower has gone down a bit. But I'm assuming we're going to be able to force, conscript, and mobilize everyone. Okay. The DPR and the LR have the majority of the units. The Archive Republic doesn't really have that much on the border, surprisingly. Maybe because they're not meant to be a free and independent state. Unfortunately, we allowed them. They were just too dug in. Hopefully, that is not the dagger in the north. Because we're not going to be able to entrench as well. We're not going to be able to build stuff around Bilgorod. Okay, let's go with improved artillery too. No more regulations or laws we can change. Okay, so unfortunately Poroshenko's popularity is falling a bit, but that might be sensible and realistic to bring in Zelensky. Okay, let's improve this. Uh, artillery, uh, what do I want to go with? I'm actually kind of tempted to go with like an anti-air, but it'll take longer. Maybe go with submarines too, actually. 140 days, it'll be worth it. If we can have basically a wolf pack down in the south, it's probably our best bet. I don't think we're going to need convoys. We can get a lot of stuff flown in from Poland or used on the railway system. Okay, so we've built up a decent amount of supplies, which I think we've got enough to waste. So, because we haven't had much fighting now for a couple of years, and we're moving fresh new, new divisions to the front, I think we'll chuck everyone on exercise. Now, the only worry is we are expending valuable equipment we can use, but it might be worth it because we're going to be coming up against, at least in the first half, proper professional soldiers very experienced vetive and let's just try and get our own custom fourth gen craft here okay and let's try and move them to the border still training still keeping a watchful eye yeah I don't know what happened to my air force I started off with 80 maybe it was seized as a lot of our I think half our more than half our navy <laughs> defected to the other side to the Federation unfortunately oh my god we can ask for Poland just for a bunch of FB mini rifles <laughs> sure whatever we can get it doesn't really bother me okay out with the old let's try and re uh, modernize the infantry okay we're getting improved artillery which is nice yep Getting a three or so a week. Um, I might take the ahead of time penalty. We'll see. Oh, that's going to take a thousand days. I can't do... I can't get any of these other chassis. Okay, let's go within with the new, which will give us experience for officers. Advanced trajectory calculation and stable platforms is probably what I eventually want to go down to. I quite like that. Okay, so we can actually bring in Valeri's Illusiony there. We can re-customize some of our army doctrines as well. We haven't even had access to that yet. Sending it 41k. Now, we do have a small enclave of territory far in between. Um, <laughs> we could paratroop some units in there, maybe. I don't know. I don't know why that is technically under our regional administration. Technically. A little bit weird. A little bit bizarre, but okay. Okay, let's uh, change the colors slightly. Just so it's a little bit easier for me to see. But hopefully we can do enough in and around and between before the war. Here we go. So, I think... Oh, no, I misclicked. I should have gone with not... Oh, I shouldn't have gone with strategic destruction. I should change that stuff. Fuck. I should have gone with battlefield support. That was a misclick. Because that's all we really have at the moment. <laughs> Close air support. 
Uh, military agreements with the West. Yep. There's just so much good stuff in the tech tree to go down. <laughs> Such a hard decision. Okay, now we're sitting at about 30k manpower. Currently have 84 divisions in training. But we're going to be sort of thankful for this time of peace as we've got time to build up. Good chunk of rocket artillery moving to the front. And now we've got 4k. Now... Because I don't know when this invasion is going to happen, I might have to cancel some of these divisions because then that frees up, what, 116k. Okay. I just wanted to see how many we had locked. So it was actually the full amount. So we might actually try and re-get some of those. Okay. Let's go with Submarine 2. We're not going to worry about any patrol stuff. So what are we looking at now? We've got 14 subs. I think I want to just continue to get like submarine 4. I think that would be good. Because we're probably not going to have access to Storm Shadow and whatever they use to hit the Black Sea port. Okay, so let's be a little bit more frugal of what we put that to. Um, so we can't go down the NATO one, but we can do our own sort of Ukrainian one. That's cool. All right. We've got close air support coming along. Um, oh, right. This is for our, the Mikolaev shipyard. Improved submarine stuff. Okay. A little bit of a border conflict here. Why did 31 get split off? Happens from time to time. Okay. Nice. All of those... Military factories have been converted. And now we can try and straight up construct some more. Alright. Uh, still continue here. Oh, perfect. We can actually like per purchase stuff straight from NATO. So let's, yeah, let's get artillery. Let's get arms. Actually, probably need to focus on javelins and stingers more or less. Another Independence Day. Poland sending us more equipment. We're slowly but surely getting rid of the old Soviet doctrine, getting rid of our Soviet hangover, as it were. It's only been a couple of decades since we've been independent, realistically. Okay, it's probably time to put those guys that are new, fresh recruits on exercise as well. I'm feeling comfortable that we're, built, we're slowly but surely building up enough logistics and material. If not, I wouldn't be... Um, training so let's go with three so 2017 we do actually get access we should realistically get access to our own in-house ball pop but i guess we're just using the ak platform still uh we could integrate the militias that's probably not a bad idea and we can probably add a couple more of these 161k now so we can do a bit more i just don't want to get to a point where we've got no manpower we can dive into because we did lose like 60k before which was kind of a big chunk we could have afforded not to lose that yeah we just struggled to um push into Kharkiv unfortunately purchase F-16s okay so it's going to be a little while those NATO rifles and javelins are coming over because uh, Barack Obama didn't send javelins. He refused, didn't he? But I think the Trump administration actually sent them in the end. So now that he's in, we can probably request a bunch from his administration. Uh, end laws. Let's just try and get some of those. And continue to ferry everyone over. All right. Increased logistics there. I didn't realize how close like Belarus actually was to us in the north there. It's mostly forestry, so it's probably going to be quite hard for them to get through there. Uh, Zaluzny can now be an infantry expert, so he's rank 5 now, moving on 6, which is good. Really got some natural traits. Could eventually be potential president after Vladimir Zelensky, who we haven't even brought in yet. Okay, let's try and add this a little bit more now. As we've got a bunch of manpower spare. So, maybe I should have just waited. 
a little bit later. Okay, anything else we can go down here? D oligarch guys. I think I see you say that. D oligarch. Let's go with infantry equipment for three. And we're going to get a bonus here as well. Okay. So, I think... Yeah, we've roughly got over 100 divisions in active service. So, we've increased it by 40 within two years. Hopefully, we can get that a bit more. Uh, let's continue to rid the corrupt oligarchs. We still can't go with this. Um, oh, wow. So, the fight is here. So we can go... I didn't even see this. That's that's when, like, stuff full-on kicks off. Um, I don't really know if that's... That's other stuff. Alright, let's move there. Okay, there's been a little bit of pushback. Unfortunately. Okay, February now, 2018. Now, I could reorganize this slightly... So, not quite. Hang on. We don't want to send... Oh, shit, hang on. Instead of having three armies, let's just have one big one, I think. Alright, let's go through and... Bring out a mixture of experience and fresh recruits. Now, I don't know how many, ideally, oh, I was one off, <laughs> you need to sort of survive the event. Oh, my God. Bear with me. There we go. So, so many divisions to manage. <laughs> it's such a big map. <laughs> I like it, though. Really enjoying this mod so far. I do wish there was more zoomed-in scenarios like this. For example, you don't always want to necessarily play a full Germany series. You, like, sometimes you just want to play, like, the French. The, uh, the Reich Conquest of France zoomed in. That'd be cool. Or maybe on the Eastern Front. Okay, so, for whatever reason, we can't negotiate... Getting more trade in. Maybe once we stop constructing, that'll be a thing. Okay, so now we're getting to about 70 or so. I keep on not doing that properly. Right, so Zaluzhny has 72. And then we've got 35 with the other bloke. We can't even negotiate with them <laughs> to get stuff. Hungary is still continuing to invest, which is nice. Um... Constantly looking into events and decisions. April now, 2018. Okay. Um, we want to go with this one. We want to go with Wolfpack. That's eventually what we want to get down to. Have the Wolfpack. Let's go with Field Hospital there. And no, Recon Company rather than Military Police. Uh, we're going down Oligarch stuff. Let's try and fix up the taxation here. Okay, so at the moment, we still don't have units on the southern border. We will have to move back up north at some point. Right, let's go back into the international arms market. The more javelins we can get, the better. Because if we can crush their tanks, their BMPs, their aviation, we might be able to win this war. Or at least not crumble in defeat, because from what we experienced fighting with their regular infantry, it was pretty challenging. The DPR and stuff, not so much, but the actual, like, regular Federation troops? Yikes. Okay, we're actually getting improved anti-stuff here. And yeah, right, we've got another fresh tank unit coming up. Uh, improved equipment. Maybe we do get military police there. Try to improve our situation in Transnistria. In Transnistria. Um, 
So our support equipment's good. We do try and want to probably spread this out a bit. We have 46. Ugh, just the steel we don't have, which is super annoying. Okay. July 2018. Hopefully we're making good progress. It's gonna... It's just like, yeah, we're not gonna know. 100% stability, 55 war support, 89 factories in total. We have committed our fuel commitment fully, but now our logistics is sitting at around about 61% field, so it could be significantly higher. We've got 113 convoys, but... I don't think we're really relying on them that much. Like, we're not going to be able to use them up the Dnipro. Like, we might trade up through the Danube, maybe? But... I don't know exactly. 114 should be enough anyway. Okay, anything else we can go with here? We can't kick that off. <laughs> I can't believe we conquered Transnistria. <laughs> Moldova refused to deal with them. <laughs> so at least they won't be able to attack from the west. I don't think they ever launched from there, though. Although there was military troops stationed in the country. Uh, we can probably promote Bukhanov. So... We'll move more units to... Go under the command of Ruslan... Uh, Chamachuk or whatever <laughs> these names. I keep on forgetting them. <laughs> I pronounce them right the first time and then forget. Um, what do I want to go with? Armored Train? Himlars? That's probably not a bad idea. Emlars. Okay. The Rada is stable for now. Let's prepare for border in skirmishes again. Would like to request more military equipment. Um, to go with down now. Still can't get any of this stuff yet. Maybe improved armor. Yeah, at the moment we're focusing on the Lviv tank factory. Because we've lost the Kharkiv one. Oh, that still pisses me off so much. But alas. If we can win this war. Them being... Separatists probably will help us. Uh, some agents. I don't really know necessarily what to do with them. Let's move more units to the Una, the border. Okay, slowly but surely, putting in the groundwork and the support, so we can have a successful campaign as we look to end now, 2018. Sitting in and around December. Because you don't know, they could still surprise attack us early. But only time will tell. Okay. Ah, oh, nice. Vladimir Zelensky has announced his candidacy. So, hmm. Petro Poroshenko, the chocolate king, <laughs> seems to be doing all right. So far in this series, I don't know if we want to get rid of him, but it might be one of those things where we don't get access to a huge good part of the Czech, uh, tech tree if we don't go with Zelensky. Let's negotiate with the Poles to get some more javelins. We do have some of our own in laws and stuff and Carl Gustafs that we can get. Like similar to that. But yeah, javelins, the better we can get, the better. Um. I might take the... No, actually, we'll go with Rocket. I was going to say, I'm tempted to take the Time Ahead penalty, but we're not. Let's uh, reform the National Guard. So we're sitting at 138k. So that's double what we lost first time around. Lithuania. Supporting the country. Nice. So now, we're getting closer to 140 divisions. And Submarine 5? Oh, it's going to take so long, but then that... That might be worth it. And then we can get a bonus from there. So that means... We're going to have like the best subs, probably. So let's actually reallocate them further back there, actually. Because I don't want to... Yeah, I want them in the port of Odessa to protect that. 
Because if we can have naval supremacy and basically stop any full-scale amphibious attack, that would be fantastic. So early coastal support stuff is probably not bad either. But I think I want to focus all my navy, navy dockyard, uh, dockyards on um, naval dockyards on submarines. I think that's the play. But let's just hope this time around that the Admiral Staff doesn't defect. <laughs> that would be uh, infuriating to say the least. Okay, so we're going to commit one of our research slots to that one. So we're going to take a big time ahead penalty. Yikes. So it's going to take four years. So we'll see. Should be worth it. Alright. So, yeah, really nothing has happened too much. Oh, wow. Got some more divisions on the way. But hopefully we've done enough. We've done a lot of work in our, in our artillery. We're building up our units well. Keeping an eye on cross-border skirmishes. So, hopefully we've done enough. Okay. So our logistics fulfillment is going down a little bit. Steel, not having enough steel is our major issue at the moment. It's really slowing production of everything down. Uh, we do have access now to armored trains. So let's get some of those. I think we can get railgun units. It probably wouldn't be a bad idea at some point to get some of those. They can be handy, particularly on the front line. Okay, let's go with improved radar. Let's get more units to the front again. Because we've nearly maxed out there. So 150 I kind of want as minimum. All right, nice. The 2019 presidential election. Let's go with, yeah, President Zelensky. Look how young and fresh, fresh face he looks. <laughs> uh, Boris Johnson has just become prime minister. And we nearly have 150 divisions on the border. Unfortunately, in this alternative timeline, not only did Donetsk, Luhansk, and okay, that's an interesting development there, <laughs> uh, rebel, that the Oblast of Kharkiv has fallen as well. So, we won't have the Battle of Sumy in this series. They're going to be even further in our territory. So, it's going to be interesting to see if we can hold on and survive. So we're currently just trying to remodernize and sort of westernize our army where we can. Is there anything we can go down here? Maybe we go with like early warning systems. We're slowly but surely building up our military logistics and materiel. We have 600k manpower-ish. We're growing our doctrine as well. We spent some time, pre some time previously focusing on purchasing as much NATO arms as we can. We've also done training exercises. We're focusing on artillery, anti-air. Navy-wise, we have a pretty decent sized submarine force. So hopefully, once the war kicks off, we're going to be at a convoy raid and maybe try and destroy the Black Sea fleet and basically make Crimea untenable for them. But we'll see. But so far, just trying to build up as much as we can. Uh, it's been quite some time since we've had any sort of conflicts on this border. It's four years or so. So I'll set up some front lines just in case. But unless we somehow get an opportunity to try and reincorporate these oblasts back into our territory. We'll see. I'd like to, but I don't know if we're going to be able to. Alright, so looking down the events and decisions. Anything else we can do here now? Still preparing those border skirmishes. We can't purchase F-16s just yet. We do have a small amount of close air support, which we'd like to continue. But at the moment... Oh, we also <laughs> annexed Transnistria, <laughs> which is quite funny. So, night attack now. Nice. Gonna try and get those thermal scopes attached. 
especially on the flat terrain of Ukraine. That's going to be massive for us. I mean, there's not much coverage. Okay, we can't upgrade our chassis. I could take the advanced three artillery. Because if we can sort of try and match with them, we actually might even be able to make our own high mobility artillery as well. Because at the moment, we're still very much producing everything in-house. We have 43% of our logistics requirement. Oh, no. So that's now reached Europe as it's January 2020 now. So basically, from here on now, the war can kick off any time. I think I want to go with that, actually. Okay, we're slowly but surely moving more military forces that have been recruited in Kiev, put them to the border. And we might need to auto-drop a bunch of them. What's our main issue? So we've got a bunch of infantry equipment, rocket artillery, artillery, anti-air, we're good. The anti-air, anti-tank could be better. But once we start getting NATO and uh, Western equipment and material, that should change things. But we want to try and produce as much of our in-house stuff as we can. Okay, so... He still very much controls the Rada, which is good. Now, thankfully, there doesn't seem to be too many units on this Kharkiv border. Closer towards the DPR. Seems to be a lot worse. Now, will they be able to move from Belarus territory? You'd think so, but they... I don't know if there's a game limitation in that. And we still can't get those chassis yet. So we only got the T-90s. Uh, let's go with a small frame there. Advanced artillery upgrade. Maybe go with rocket artillery improvements. Okay. Military factories wise, we're sitting at 53. We can get advanced artillery now. Weapons 3 is probably not a bad idea. You just gotta calculate. Sometimes it is worth taking the time ahead penalty. But not always. Okay, let's go with widespread. We've nearly finished that doctrine there. Okay, anything else here in the radar? We can't do any more stuff here, unfortunately. Hmm. I could just drop them at some point. Because they're so close. Sometimes it's better... If you've just got so much territory and tiles, like just sometimes getting bodies on the front line can be better. We could potentially increase that. Or is there like one of these that has a bit more? So. Which division do I like the look of? So maybe go with like that. 15 or 20. Like, or maybe like 30 infantry. You can control a bunch of divisions in this mod. It's kind of crazy. We've basically spent a good chunk of our army experience. So we can't customize our divisions too much. <clears throat> Excuse me. So that's chipped away 150k. So we've still got 450k. We do have a decent size pop. But... Once things kick off, we can look to mobilize more, I think. Okay, trade-wise, not too bad. So we got 19 submarines. That's more than what I thought. I thought I had about 10. It's actually a bit more. And they're not like tier 1 or 2. Eventually, hopefully, they can be like tier 4. Okay, still making plans and preparations. Building up. Everything seems a little bit docile on the border for now. Like, what are our tanks actually using? Like, what are... Oh, okay, T-72s. Chassis. A nice mixture there of Polish and Lithuanian equipment by the look of it. As we hit into August 2020, another Independence Day. Brilliant. Brilliant. 
Okay, we do have some more military factories in the far west of the country. Because I don't think they're seriously ever going to be under threat. Let's make sure we go with convoy raiding down here in the Black Sea and in the Azov Sea. Got those offensive plans just in case. And now we've completed that entire doctrine. Okay, nothing else we can do here to suspend that political power. Oh, it's probably been some time since we've gone back on the international arms market. We'll look to go back there again. Okay, we've completed this side of the tech tree. We can modernize the Odessa port. That's probably not a bad idea. As we're getting most of our submarines constructed down there. So, we've nearly got 200 divisions. Nice. We have 180 in active service. Which is roughly what I wanted. I think once the full-scale invasion happens, I wanted somewhere between 150 to 200. Just to defend all these tiles. There's probably that many tiles. But it's going to be interesting to see how we perform against the proper federation troops. <laughs> Biden <laughs> has been elected. Nice. Good for him. He just likes ice cream. Licking ice cream. <laughs> okay. Um. Oh, okay. We can get some Gen 4 carrier craft here. Okay, so unfortunately our submarine 3 is stopped up. It's just because of the steel. We haven't been able to import some. Things might have changed now. Because I'm still learning this mod at the end of the day. I feel like there was a time where we like deliberately couldn't recruit. Maybe if I kind of rejig this a bit, it might give us access to steel. Hang on. So there's no. So can I, uh, like, will Poland or someone like give me any? Because like for the last couple of times we've tried to go in here, we've had no factories available. But I don't know what's. Maybe you have to stop those military factories being recruited constructed um because steel is just not having it we can't seem to build our own steel factories either or processing plants because at the moment we're not increasing our navy capacity okay december now oh god it's january <laughs> we got public unrest <laughs> happening oh no unheard scenes took place in washington dc today what were they trying to accomplish? Okay. Crisis in Eastern Europe. So January 1st, 2021. We're going to go with High Court Anti-Corruption. We want to try and weed out the Soviet hangover where we can. Yeah, so our equipment and logistics of vehicles and stuff could be a bit better. Although we have a bunch of divisions on the front line, only 45% of the equipment is like properly filled. But from what I've found is you're better off to have a unit that's not properly full equipped than not have a unit on the front line at all. You're better off having some resistance on a tile than none. But that short fall, in theory, should be able to be made up once the Western powers start flooding vehicles. Get the Aussies to bring in the Bushmasters, various IVFs and tanks, get the Abrams, get the Leopards, and whatever the French send. <laughs> Okay, let's continue to flood more over where we can. But so far, pretty solid mil military commanders ready. March 21. 
We've gone down to 430k manpower. Our stability is 100%, which is nice. War support, 47. We're not having, like, any fuel issues. <laughs> it's because I guess we don't really have that many moving around. Let's once again prepare for more border skirmishes. But we're not going to know that we've done enough until <laughs> stuff kicks off. We've re-westernized our officer corps, which is nice. So they should perform better. Moving away from the Soviet doctrine. Okay, that's now being complete. Um, let's go with rocket artillery there. Oh, nice. Those military factories we built are now done. Uh, I don't know if there's anything else we can go down here. Oh, no, maybe getting more naval stuff. Okay. Still trying to move more units to the front line where we can. Okay. May 21. Still keeping a watchful eye on the border. I suppose... Oh! No, they're justifying against us. Oh, no, it's about to happen. No! It's like a year early. Oh, no. That's not good. I did see them, like, go on the border. A little bit earlier. Oh, no. Here we go. It's about to kick off, I think. Have we done enough? Yikes. So, it's probably 60, 90 days or so. Okay, so we're going to drop all these divisions. Because it's such a long border we're going to have to deal with. And... A lot of them are so close to nearly being finished anyway. Okay, so... Let's now stop recruiting units at all. We don't need to. We need every single spare equipment to basically go to fulfilling the entire units so where do we begin we've managed to drop another 120 so we've probably got oh, 300 divisions or so quite a significant amount so let's make sure that every single army is fully equipped with 72 units so Zeluzhny can have the main Ruslan can have the second, Komuchuk. And we'll just chuck it on there because it's just easier to drag those units that have recently been deployed. Let's get some tank divisions. Oh no, so we've been RNG'd here. We're not going to have another year or so to prepare. Yikes. I wonder what caused that. Maybe they felt more secure in their position. Now that they can move over from Kharkiv, so let's go, just get rid of some of these. Let's go with, how many exactly? About that, and then we'll move you to Borunov. And... We'll start moving on the border. So, where's the best place to defend? Well, obviously, looking at the topography of Ukraine, we can basically, worst case scenario, flee back over the Dnipro. And use the river as a defensive barrier. But ideally, we want to try and hold as much of our territory as long as we can. Which is easier said than done. Okay, let's move south and then grab that. Cool. So we have 298, 115 infantry, 35 rocket, 29 IVF, the rest being tanks. Okay, so let's draw these front lines where we can. And set up some defensive perimeter. So essentially the first three are going to be our best units. So I think trying to hold these tiles and territory 
down in the south. If we can tr sort of hold them from actually pushing from Crimea, the better. So do we go with the defensive line there? Because they might amphibiously invade. Potentially. Alright, let's give Zoluzhny the command of... Oh, maybe the north. Or do I put him... Am I tr I'm trying to think. Should, uh, do I protect... Because they can come from... Are they going to have more supply from their core territory rather than the oblasts there that are technically their puppets? I think there might be a bigger push in the north and they could snipe my capital. So we'll, we'll send Zaluzhny north. And we'll check another one here. So we'll try and commit the bulk of the Ukrainian forces on this eastern side. We also need to uh, reallocate our air force. I guess we have close air support. We do have 200 fighters now. So let's remove this. Oh my god. Okay, that's a bit better. And then we'll try and hold in the south there. I just don't know how strong they're going to push. If we can hold them on those key choke points, that would be ideal. Okay, I think that's a bit better. Well, we're just sort of waiting for the inevitable, I suppose. 300 divisions. We probably can go with some traits. Zaluzhny is a five-star general now. If we survive, he could be our next president. Uh, Kamachuk is going to be focusing on the south here. I'm trying to think, like, am I better off to actually, you know what, unassign some of these and then draw a front line on those points because we kind of don't want them just to send hang on I, I think I got a better idea so we will go with like 20 there we go and we can draw a front line there and mm, I guess we can situate you here on this choke point And then maybe sit some down here. Alright. The military build-up is now... <laughs> oh no. Well and truly happening. Okay, so they are moving into the Oblasts there. They do have some troops on the Belarus border. I wonder if they're going to start paratrooping. Potentially as well. We're going to have to keep a watchful eye on... Bloody hostimal. Uh, let's try and get some more anti-tank stuff if we can. No, I can't. Okay, so here are our logistics. Hopefully it's enough. We've got no divisions. In active training. So they're not terrible. But they could be more <laughs> desirable. Yikes. So maybe this is probably our best regiment. If we can start flooding them in, that'd be better. Uh, let's go with that. Oh, nice. We've finally finished the research of the end law. So we can produce our own in house. Let's go with support equipment, maybe. Oh, actually, no. Let's go with a better BTR. Oh, we've got 36k there. 36k. <laughs> 36 units, rather. We're still getting military aid from various countries. Lithuania just gave us some more there. Alright. Maybe try and stretch that a bit, just in case more amphibious attacks go. Now that we've got them on the choke point there, let's just try and... Spread that out. Oh, yeah, there's Snake Island. <laughs> July now, 22. Hungary is providing us with heavy armaments. Nice of them. Alright. Not enough command power. There's nothing we can just sort of sit here. Oh, I do want to try and, when I attack, be aggressive. 
Pandora Papers. Okay. Uh, yeah, let's go with Advanced Artillery. They are still justifying against this. Can I see when it's going to happen? I'd love to know. Oh! They have recognized the People's Republics. So, uh, I could maybe drop them. Just to get another 30 or so more. Nope! The fight is here. Here we go. The moment you've been waiting for. Slava Ukraini! It's begun. August 21, so a full year earlier. Uh-oh. We're now at war. So we have 290 divisions. Let's drop another 30. Because I just don't know how long... I just, I just don't know how strong this push is going to be. Uh, okay, so they're starting to push over here. We're holding them on the... Crimean choke point. They haven't pushed here, though. Wait, you can't just go from there? What? So they have upwards of 150 to 260. The main federation force. Okay, so... They don't seem to be moving through Belarus territory, so that's good for me. But here we go. The fight is here. We're holding in the south. Not so much in the center here. Oh, okay, so now we are getting pushed back a bit here. Um, we actually seem to have air support, which is interesting. Air supremacy. Even though we haven't got that many planes. Okay, now it's starting to change. We've got another 30 divisions there in Kiev. But... Well, we're not doing so good in the south. We've lost 44k. They've lost 31. Yikes. So, at the moment, we're just going to try and hold the front line. Oh, no. Mariupol has fallen. Unfortunately, the boys in the steelworks couldn't hold on. So, at the moment, we're just trying to hold <laughs> as long as we can. Uh, we seem to be better doing better in the south. Yikes. We've lost 74k. We've taken out 62 of them. And they are pushing towards Kiev, unfortunately. So, we do have an abundance of infantry. Yikes, our logistics is going to absolute shit. We just need to try and hold as, as long as possible. for And wait for Western support. Okay, we seem to be doing better in the peninsula here. Holding on those tiles. But it's great to see our small submarine contingent doing some convoy raiding. Okay, so now we might get encircled here. That's something we have to keep an eye on. So how this mod works, there's sort of offensives back and forth. So I think just trying to bide our time. We just basically need to survive. We don't need to be doing crazy offensive actions. So at the moment, unfortunately, we're just sort of trading on the border. We have air support here. Can I reallocate it to the north? We're having some issues. Oh, we want to go with... Yes, we went with battlefield support. Let's go with fighter. Ace chance. Uh, nothing else we can do here now either. Oh, unfortunately, they've pushed over the... Um, to the southern part of the country. Hang on. We're going to have to reallocate this so basically we've got 29 divisions just trying to guard the southern coast but we might not need that anymore if they're not going to amphibiously navally invade i thought there was a high chance so we need to stop this pocket from growing so obviously using the terrain of ukraine we can always just cross over the western side of the Dnipro and hold there but I think the longer we can hold on to this part of the country the better okay so unfortunately like in real life they're doing quite well in the south 
We just need to stop this from growing. Okay. Mm, they're starting to push me down here. We haven't done any offensive actions either, by the way. Okay. So they were gaining a lot of momentum in the north. Oh no, maybe we haven't done enough. As actually fighting regular Federation regulars. Oh no, they've just lost 100k then trying to push. Okay. We have 800k manpower. Let's drop another bunch here. Probably just trying to attach them to the south. Not everyone is like... Fully equipped. Uh, victory in the north. Yeah, just trying to get bodies on the front. Okay, I think we've stabilized this. October now 21. So, I wonder if we can't do tech tree stuff because it happened a bit earlier. We can't go with NATO standard yet. We couldn't finish that. Now they're at war. We can't go with any of this stuff. So, I guess we need to go down to the fight is here stuff. Yeah, all of this is now stopped. Damn, there was some of this stuff I would have really liked to do. But I guess you can't do everything. I prioritized other stuff. Oh, God. <laughs> I didn't even do the lockdown stuff. <laughs> Oof. And we weren't able to fortify a lot of that. Alright, let's go with the fighters here. So that will give us some... Defense. So let's go with this. So let's start working down that part of the tree. And then we're going to be able to get all this western support. Nice. Okay. Let's go with the Battle of Kiev. Uh, yep, let's mobilize the National Guard. We're definitely going to need them. Whoa, why did they move? There. Wait, what? Okay. I know these are new divisions. Okay. So they are taking a lot of tiles and territory. But we've slowed them down a bit. Okay, another four convoys have been crushed. Oh, these guys are probably done in now. They've been completely surrounded. Okay, let's make sure we root out those collaborators. So although they pushed in the south quite well. Alright, here's this. Oh wow, look at this. Oh my god, how many units did we just get then? What the hell? 76. Well, that should seriously help this southern push. Okay, so they actually aren't moving over the border from Belarus, which which I feared. Okay, and they also didn't do any paratrooping or naval attacks. So I think maybe putting the National Guard to the north is probably the best bet because we've got a lot more of our key victory points up there. We have 407 divisions now. Which is more than them. If we can basically hold this until the winter, we might be able to delay them essentially because it's November now. And then ideally go on a counter offensive a bit later. Okay. Let's go take back the north. Yikes. So basically near Zaporizhia and Kharkiv Oblast, we're losing a lot of territory. Nice. We are still effectively still convoy raiding against them. We still hold Kherson. We haven't pushed back over the river yet. We still have Tokmak and all that territory down in the south. Okay, so we can probably go on a, a little bit of a push here now. Let's set up some front lines. But the longer we wait, the better it gets for us. So basically, they want to try and wrap up this war as quickly as possible. The longer we wait, we get more support, they don't. 
So let's just set up some front lines for when we... And offensive plans when we do need to attack. We have 1.1 million manpower. Let's try and lobby the west for more... Material and aid. Okay. So we've lost 235k. They've lost 300 or so. Okay, things are starting to stabilize a bit. I think I might just redo all of this because it's getting a bit crazy now. I think I can make this a bit better. Because we didn't even need to hold them on that Belarus territory. Do I need to push over the river yet? The thing is, you want to use it as a last resort. Another six convoys. So, so far, the Federation can't seem to combat our fantastic submarine wolf back <laughs> that's causing a lot of damage. Hopefully we can try and take out some of the Black Sea fleet. So, let's get Zaluzhny to hold the north. Uh, Budinov can hold the south. Ruslan can hold the peninsula. Um... Now, oh, do we set a fallback line? So, hang on. You know what? So, we'll make a front line, and we'll make a fallback line over the river. Okay, I'm drawing this terribly. Because, the thing is, if they do a push, we don't want to be caught moving back over the river. We want to be already over there, to some extent, so... We'll make a front line, and we'll draw a fallback line over the Dnipro. So there. And we'll do the same with you. So we can hold Hassan. So where's Zaporizhia? So it's on the other side of the river. Okay. And Dnipro is further north. Okay. Because we're going to get maybe surrounded there. So some of already our units here in Zaporizhia or Blast have actually nearly pushed back over the river. Yikes. It's not looking good. <laughs> November 21. I just didn't know how well their forces would perform so far against like the DPR and all these other smaller oblasts. But against the regulars, yikes. They're pretty heavy hitters. So let's go with something like that. Um, and then make a front line here. Okay. Just need to constantly redraw this, I think, the better. And let's make you here. Perfect. Beautiful. And then do the same. And then we've just got to fight like hell. On that side of the river. Can't give them an inch. But already looking at some of those national focus stuff that we have access to. Beautiful. Bonuses. We're going to be able to get in the future. Okay, I think we're good to unpause now. So now that National Guard has come in. Okay, that's a lot better. That looks a lot more secure. They've launched more offensives against us. So, we wanted it. Okay, so some of those guys have got caught. Okay, things have stabilized in the north. Here in the center, things are not looking good. We just got to watch out for this encirclement down here. Alright, so they are really on the border. Uh, we're losing a lot of that. Okay, so now we're nearly going to get cut off. Do we retreat? More convoys getting crushed. Okay, now we've been split off there. We're still on the other side of... Who's on here? We just don't want to get caught. Uh, so, what's that? Melitopol? Tokmak? Okay, so they've actually split us there. 
Do we try and get back over this side? Still trying to lobby the west for more support. Still continuing on those convoy raiding. Oh, they're trying to intercept our navy. Okay, back down here. Uh, where do I want to go with now? Stabilize the front's probably not a bad idea. Oh, God. Oh, that's a big push there. Okay, things are doing a lot better. Melitopol, unfortunately, has fallen. December now, 21. Okay. Bunch of traits we need to divvy up. Just We just need to bide our time. Okay, I think we need to get out of here now. And use the natural defenses of the Nipro. Target pontoon bridges. All that jazz. Trying to make it really hard for them to cross. So they're focusing mostly on the east. We weren't threatened at all from the north. Maybe that's just game limitations. Makes sense. But so far... Haven't made it easy for ourselves. <laughs> it's not an unsalvageable position, but it's, it's not good. There's a really big push there, though. Okay. Oh, my God. There's a big push there, actually. Um, how am I going to get... How am I going to save this? <laughs> oh, no. We are crumbling a bit. It's now January 1st, 22. So, they were a lot more... Keen to start things off earlier. So now, hang on. Yikes. They just, like, break through so strong. We have a bunch of manpower in reserve, so we're, we're sitting good that wise. All right, let's redraw this. So at the moment, we're not having any threats in the north, and I don't necessarily know why. So I think we'll get Zaluzny to hold it, and I guess we try and hold that. Or do we need to push further back over the river and just fully give it up properly? Yeah, nah. Fall back over the river. Or has he only got 27? So something like that. We'll allow them to get tiles. You try and go something like this. Um, I probably only need like two armies up here because we're not really getting threatened up here for whatever reason. We could just basically throw everyone to the south. We can't allow this push. For all intensive purposes. Like, you might be better off just to move that up north. Or maybe defend this area here. And then sort of make it go up that way. Yeah, that's a bit better. That'll do. So you can do both. They're flooding in a lot of soldiers there. Uh, these 40 that were allocated in the north, I think Zelushni and another army is fine. We probably should send you south. Yeah, let's reallocate these 40 units that are sitting on at the top of the border. They can head south, and then we'll send the other 72 up there. Okay, let's just reallocate our front line. Because now that they've overextended there, we might be able to get some back. Okay, so some of those guys just fled over the river there. Nice. Okay. Yeah, I think we bided our time enough. Uh, let's go with war industry to help out with our civilian factories. Oh, my God. <laughs> so we basically need to stop this push as we head into January 22. We haven't capitulated just yet, but it's uh, not looking good. We still seem to have air power. In some regions. So maybe let's try and reallocate the air force down here to help us out. In the Zaporizhia airfield. Okay, we've lost 316k. We've so they've lost 70 more k than us. His display picture has changed. Alright. Um, let's continue to go back into the NATO arms purchase. We've got a bunch of political power, so... Uh, do I want trucks and stuff? Sure, let's just try and get whatever we can. 
We can increase our conscription. Um, that's a lot of bad traits, so I don't think we're going to do that just yet, because we've got one million manpower to spend. And we've already lost heaps, and it's only been essentially year one. Um, can we get our steel stuff fixed? So what do we got here? We are looking good, like, anti-air-wise. It's just basically infantry equipment I think we need to focus on. Not having a high volume of steel has been an absolute pain. Okay, so maybe we'll just try and focus on getting more rifles where we can. Okay. Um, Jeez. <laughs> We're probably 60% towards capitulation. They haven't called in some of their allies as well. Okay. So, unfortunately, they're going to get caught. Crushed and surrounded. We just need to try and stabilize this front. And then we'll... Eventually try and do offensive actions when it's in our favor, but we just need to survive. To be honest. A little bit of a pocket there, trying to push. Okay, so they aren't... Still trying to cross the Nipro successfully. Ugh. This is intense. <laughs> this is going to be so, so close. Hopefully we can come back from this. Okay. So we're doing a lot better just in the north. But maybe we did alright. Maybe we could have just got absolutely flooded in the south. And we've actually held them there for quite a good amount of time. Okay. So they are really flooding troops over there. They've got to be careful not to overextend here though. Alright. Alright. We might need to redraw this again. It's much easier when you can draw front lines and don't need to use the defensive lines. Right. So, let's redraw this. Okay, thankfully they didn't just like parachute in. That could have been really quite costly if they did. Okay, let's try and reform this. But so far, we haven't done any offensive actions just yet. We will. We'll do our own counter-offensive and try and retake some of our territory. But... Oh, no. Wait, they took her son. Oh, shit. <laughs> oh, no. Wait, why did a convoy get hit there? Okay. Alright, so... If I was to launch an offensive plan, can we take Zaporizhia back? Because their supply... Is going to be not the best there. Alright, there we go. Nice. That's what I'm talking about. So, it wasn't the deliberate plan, but they pushed over the river. And now they've extended a bit. Hang on, we might be able to throw them back. Uh, maybe we can do the same in Hassan. Okay, so this is our first sort of offensive actions. Let them overextend over the river, and then we can hit them. It seems to be working. We'll hold them into a false sense of security. Because we're, at the end of the day, going to have far superior supply than them. Okay, let's redraw this again. Let's drop another bunch here. Just get more bodies on the line. Yes, yes. They're not going to have the best equipment, but it's fine. Okay. This is um, a challenging mod. <laughs> it's a lot of fun. I'm just trying to play it on the the rip. I'm sure you can min-max it a bit more, but so far enjoying it. Okay, there we go. Right, okay. Just need to save that pocket there. Oh, nice. We're really pushing them back there. Okay. Yeah, the north is not really... Not much is going on. You know, how are our convoys getting hit there in the river? That's so bizarre. I guess they've moved some chips up. Okay. Here we go. Nice push here. 
Doing a bit better in the south in some pockets as well. Okay, here we go. Nice. So they pushed over the river from Zaporizhia, and they've really overextended. Um, could I get Zaluzhny to do a push in the north? He seems like he has an advantage, so let's do it. Okay. Ooh, maybe not. <laughs> okay, maybe not. Maybe not. <laughs> maybe focusing on the south is a bit better. You can tie it with national focus stuff, but... There's, like, specific time defenses you can do. But for now, we seem to be doing all right, not even using them, so bear with me. Right, let's reset those. Uh, let's make sure we go on aggressive, because when I do initiate an attack, I want it to be in higher... I like to, like, go for it. I want it to be like a Blitzkrieg row. I've got a bunch of traits here that we haven't get divvied up in a while. We've neglected. Sure, let's just spend a bunch of this, whatever. Um... We seem to have pretty good entrenchment anyway, just because of the numbers we have. I think technically we have more divisions with them. Not high quality, but by numbers. Ironically, we're probably using more of a Soviet doctrine <laughs> gameplay-wise, rather than um, what we've sort of trained for. Maybe we need to do a hybrid of the both. Okay, uh, let's just try and get whatever we can. Okay, so things are looking a bit better here. Lithuania is continuing to invest. Okay. So although they pushed over the bank, doing a bit better here. Okay, they're starting to push in the north. So Budinov and Ruslan are doing okay. Um... Okay, we can get BTRDs in. Fuck, I don't know. Maybe just like anti-air stuff, maybe? Oh no, just getting better quality uh, BTR-80s. Oh no, actually, no, let's get with... God, we have the upgrades there. Yikes. Oh, nice. We're doing really well. We're probably about to throw them back over the river. We're currently getting more Western training with the Brits and the Australians as well. Operation Kudu, mate. <laughs> I've heard of that. Uh, okay, so 390. Oh, okay. So it's a 100k difference. Nice. There we go. Oh, wow. Throw them back into the sea from whence they came. Oh, right. oh my god. There's a bunch of divisions there. Perfect. Oh my god. That's what we need to do, I think. Use the Nipro to our advantage. Okay. Just the main thing is just not to capitulate. The longer we can survive, the better. It's going to get more to our advantage. We don't need to be offensively going after them just yet. At the end of the day, we're fighting a defensive war. Okay, there we go. But we didn't make it easy for ourselves. Not having... Uh, Kharkiv. Okay, now we're March 22. So it's like a month after the actual invasion. 420. So we actually can just purchase a bunch of equipment. Okay, now we're seeing at about 78 equipment supplied. Which is significantly better. So we were better off just to drop them. Like we were at down at the 20s and 30s at one point. Nice. The fall of Harkiv, what? Oh. Oh. I think they, um... Okay, so that's actually Federation Cord territory now. Right, okay. We're getting convoy raided there, which is so bizarre. So I guess they cored it. Interesting. Alright, we've pushed them back here. So they've got no control over the river. So we need to just constantly redeploy that. Budinov's offensive was exceptional, actually. But unfortunately, Nipro is not under our control. And same with Zaporizhia. Okay. Oh, we nearly pushed them back here as well. Okay, okay, okay. Things are looking a bit better here.
As you push into April. I live in Australia. All the seasons are flipped. <laughs> so I can't remember. So I guess this is autumn. Um, okay. So we haven't really done much offensive actions in the north. Here in the center, we're doing a lot better. Yeah, so I think we bait anything over the river, let them overextend, hit their supply. Oh, make sure. Oh, hang on. We don't, make sure we don't get encircled here. So many tiles here to defend. Okay. Things could be worse, but so far, we've managed to, once we get to August, survive our first year. They are starting to fully conquer and annex that territory, though, and incorporate it. I think they have a lot of it. There's a bunch here in the south. Oh, no, they've actually fully incorporated all of it. The three oblasts. Okay, so what happened to those units, then? Have they just been incorporated straight in? I, I guess they have. We're slowly but surely getting western support trickling in as well. We've got 100% stability, 100% war support under the presidential reign of Vladimir Zelensky. Our logistics are sitting at about 70%. We've got roughly 400 divisions, but the longer we can survive, the better. So just try and move them into range. I don't think our railways are getting that focused anyway. We're not having like mass amounts of strategic destruction, which they really probably should be hitting us with. Okay. So, we're trying to do a push in the north. We did bait them over the river near Hassan and Zaporizhia and crushed a bunch of divisions. And now we're on a bit of an offensive here because they've overextended. Okay. So, on the southern axis, we seem to be doing a lot better. But we just need to try and hold on as long as we can. And uh, as long as it takes. Okay. Things are looking a bit better. Somehow they actually are convoy raiding. <laughs> I guess they've got some ships doing s some military actions. I guess like Hearts of Iron doesn't really distinguish between rivers, river systems, and like open ocean stuff. You know what I mean? Like, is there much of a difference between a river port and like the port of Odessa? If you know what I mean? Probably just game limitations. All right, let's try and redraw this a bit. So it's now May. We probably can go on an offensive at some point and probably can time it. But so far they seem to overextend. If they, if they can overextend over the river, we seem to be able to be able to crush and conquer them. I'm going to redraw some front lines here, hopefully to Sumi. I'm going to try and retake her son. Um, trying to hold this territory in and around Dnipro. It's just a bit difficult. There's just so many points to attack. I want to try and retake Kharkiv. So, we just need to keep a watchful eye on where some of these pushes can be advantageous for the armed forces. But they've incorporated all the oblasts, so we're just fighting regular Federation soldiers now. I don't know what happened to the deep... I guess, like, they assimilated the um, DPR militias and whatnot. Okay, so hopefully we can last as long and sort of get to the point where we are in real life, hopefully, time-wise. But they were emboldened a full year earlier. They caught us by surprise. Um, we're still going with, ideally, wolf pack stuff. Surprisingly, our navy has been incredibly effective in doing convoy raiding. Vladimir, Vladimir Zelensky has now visited Congress in his first trip outside the country. Nice. Okay. Uh, the more we go down this, the better. We get some crazy stuff. So we could actually go on an offensive, breakthrough organization, stuff like that. So you kind of want to time it with that. And wherever it seems to be in our favor, we'll try and push. There we go. Seem to be doing a little bit better here as time goes on. Okay, let's try and push there. Nice. Let's throw them back into the river. We've lost 440k. Nice. They're at 
635. So, although they have numerical supremacy on us, there's a 200 unit difference. They have 400 minimum units. So now they do outnumber us. They must have incorporated all those other divisions. Okay, we're still continuing to buy javelins, in-laws, and stingers from the west. We're still getting a trickleman of armaments as well. Uh, Zeluzhny is going on an offensive here. If we can push them back to the Belarus border, that would be ideal. Okay, so... Although we haven't retaken Zaporizhia there, we are really fighting over those tiles. Oh my god, this is always a bit crazy here in Dnipro. Okay, they're still holding Kherson. June now. So, this is summer. Right, okay. <laughs> As an Australian, it's winter for me. <laughs> All the seasons are flipped. So, yeah, we are doing our summer counter-offensive, you could say. But we did have to retreat over the Dnipro. And we seem to be crushing, destroying, and holding more units better down here. Like, why are their units getting hit there? Um, okay. Got some more divisions on the way. Oh, those were the ones that have been trained. Thankfully, our experience is quite high with some of these guys. There's not too many fresh green troops. Because we did have to deal with the rebellions earlier in the series. And we did some training earlier on. But so far, we've nearly been 10 years into this campaign. Man, thankfully, we didn't have to deal with... Odessa as a rebellion, pro a rebellion, a rebellious province, that could have been seriously bad. But I can see how if you basically conquer the four rebellious oblasts from the get-go, you can make it a far easier time than you. Nice, because it just gives them more territory to work with. Because our tank production was massively hindered, a lot of our Military and civilian factories were just yoinked when we lost Kharkiv. Oh, they're starting to push me here now, though. Okay. Still haven't been able to push over the river. Okay, maybe just try and reform that slightly. Okay. We are slowly shortening them there. Can we get over the river there? Nice. Actually, we're going to be able to nearly fully get them over here. Nice. They're, oh, wait, but you're moving, though. Hang on. We just threw them back. We don't want to, like, lose our position there. Okay. Uh, Nipro is having issues again. I feel like I'm just constantly drawing up borders there. But so far... Although this is a defensive war, and going on the offensive now from time to time, we're doing a lot better. We're taking out a lot of them. They are. We are inflicting mass casualties on them. Oh, they're back there now. But although we give them like a small bridgehead over there, I actually kind of don't mind it because it's giving us a massive opportunity to encirclement. Like. Sure. Push over the river with terrible supply. I'm more than happy to encircle you. <laughs> We've still actually got some guys on the other bank <laughs> over her son, like on that little peninsula there. <laughs> Doing amphibious operations. Alright, offensive in the northeast. Alright. So just sort of trading here in the border. It's been a month now or so. Okay. So they do see a breakthrough, and then they just, like, get pushed back. Look at this. A lot of them do make it back over the river, though. Come on. We're about to crush them again, I reckon. Nice. Uh, still haven't been a re be able to retake Zaporizhia. 
Then Nipro. My god. That push. Yeah, those regular tanks, man. Are so good. I might actually just need to... You know what? I'm sick of dealing with this. It might be more advantageous for us to get Budenov to divide his forces in half and then get some other bloke to deal with it. Like Aiden, because it keeps on happening. Yeah, let's get you to hold that. All right, that'll do. A bit better. Uh, okay, things are getting a bit better here. Oh, God, they're back over here again. Why? Won't you die? Stop. Oh, nice. So it's nearly ballooned to a 300k manpower difference. Look at that. Nice. We've still lost an absolute shit ton, though. Can't purchase any more stuff. Uh, oh, finally. We've got free civilian factories to import steel. We'll get steel from Poland and Slovakia. Okay, so what do we want to go with now? Um, reallocate some of the stuff. Factory output. Yeah, let's go with that. I'm seeing about 80% at the moment anyway. Oh, I forgot about my Air Force. Um, okay, so they've been operating in Zaporizhia. Maybe go back up into the north. We don't have that many closed air support. Okay. But at the moment, we seem to be taking more of them out than what we're losing. So, I think we've done okay, relatively. I still think this campaign is salvageable. I think we abided enough time on the southern axis, like over the river. And now, finding them here is just a bit strategically better. Because their supply just goes to absolute shit. So they look at this, they overextend, we push them back. Okay, we finally hit 500k. They're seeing at 824. So they do manage to escape with a good chunk of them. Ideally, if we can get to some mass encirclement of a couple units, that'd be wicked. August now, 22. Want to do some... A little bit more offensive actions. Okay, that tiled. We'll sit there. Over the warmer months. We just haven't been able to push back over the river. Um. Just go, go do that. Sometimes it's easier just to drag and push them. There we go. That's what I want. Okay. Uh, let's go with improved rounds for our IVFs. Let's go... Oh, we can't lobby for that just yet. We want to try and lobby for Western tanks. We're still, for all intensive purposes, using our old Soviet tanks, which are serviceable for now. Another Independence Day. Nice. Oh, this. We're about to crush a massive amount. Oh my god, there's a good eight or so divisions there. Another nine. That's what we're talking about. Dnieper International Airport. They've been surrounded in. Perfect. Uh, is there about to get a bunch of them surrounded there as well? No, not quite. So we've only lost 100k of our manpower. We've still got 900k. So if we can average like 100k a year, we've probably got nine years left of full hot fighting like this. I just don't know how long it's going to last. If we can get everything wrapped up by 2024, 2025, that would be ideal. We don't. We haven't even increased. We haven't even increased our conscription. We don't need to just yet. We just need to watch out for the American elections and some various other ones. Okay. Yeah, things are just back and forth, mostly on the north. There's nothing really much we can do. Our commitment's at 93%. What are we... So, infantry at the moment. Still got a bunch of anti-air and artillery. Um, We could make... Wait, Liz Trust just became Prime Minister. We could... And Her Majesty, Her Majesty died on. Shame. 
Um, we could potentially just make artillery and rocket artillery heavy units, but we don't need to just yet. Things aren't that bad. Okay, advanced artillery upgrade is now being complete. Okay. I think we're in a really, really good position now. they have stabilized stuff. Uh, advanced anti-air. MLARs. Um, maybe just go with anti-air stuff. Oh, no, actually go with support. That'll do. Okay. So we've essentially stopped their massive push. And we're just trying to do some of our own offensive actions. Still continuing to try and secure Western aid. Oh, nice. Here we go. We're about to get a massive encirclement there. Come on. Hang on. No. Hang on. We had an opportunity there. Yikes. All right, let's try and get those Western tanks in. Hang on. Like, hang on, hang on. Fuck. I feel like we need more units down here. We're having opportunities here if we just had some more units. Assessing the situation. Zeluzhny has been right so far. A counteroffensive will begin. We need a breakthrough, damn it. A counteroffensive begins. So we can go with the historical decision in 96. Or well, we can go with Ukrainian Blitzkrieg. Oh, I think that gives us a lot better stats. Oh. I actually... I've been going with the historical decision, but I might actually go with this one. Because we're in... Like, we're being crushed. We're, if we had a full-on, like, offensive buff here, I think we might be able to push them back. Okay, alright. Because we're in a worse position, but we've been... We've been doing good. We actually have been pushing them quite a bit. Like, if we can crush these units here... Liz Truss resigns. Sunak in. Okay. Like, here we go. If we can crush them, we might actually be able to fully push over... There we go. Alright, we've got a massive encirclement here near Zaporizhia. Come on. Like, really, really focus for it. Like, go for that. Go, 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 go. Nice. There we go. Perfect. Oh, dude. <laughs> Oh my god. Okay, everything's okay down here, relatively. They're still holding her son pretty well. Like, we can't just push for that. Oh my god, we finally got those submarines. <laughs> Submarine 4, sure. At least we're producing them now. That we have more steel coming in. We still have 23 subs. Yeah, we've still got our own convoys getting hit up here, which is surprising. What if those rail guns have stabilized things? Oh, we had an encirclement there. Come on. They've pushed us back. Hang on. There we go again. Alright, they've nearly lost a million, which is pretty yikes. We seem to be inflicting way more losses on them, which is surprising. Might be able to do a little bit of a push there. But if we keep this up, I think we're going to be in a better position. Nice. Once again, they've overextended over the river. Um, I don't even know what I go with Navy-wise. Uh, probably go down with construction and stuff now. Because the wars happens and stuff happens so earlier, so much earlier, I had to go with more offensive stuff. Okay, so there's... We've probably got a bunch of Western tanks and stuff. Avenge the cyborgs. Okay. Let's go with that. Okay. Oh, here we go. Oh, no, we got him. Okay. Things are still chilling on the north. Infantry equipment 3 is now being complete. Oh. We've actually taken Nipro in the north. Oh, we actually pushed over the river, I think. Nice. Okay, it's been a full year. Well, let's keep it up and keep going. Okay. 
Okay. We push back, we defended, we time wasted, we used the natural defensive position of the Nipro, let them overextend, surround and crush them, waste their military equipment and material, and now we can go on the offensive, now that we've got some western tanks and stuff coming in. Okay. Nice. If we can basically, although the territory isn't the best there, if we can just sort of open up a nice position over the other side of the river. Because it's our naturally, like, own territory. We're going to get better supply. Uh, let's go with anti-air stuff, I think. Or is there something better else we can go with? Um, no, let's go with the anti-air. We'll take the bigger time ahead, time ahead penalty, so I don't have to deal with it. Um, let's go with that. Yes, let's get improved torpedoes. Okay. Um, we can't get any more stuff here, no. Right, nice. Okay, there we go. Because in theory, if we can... Basically, it seems to... If we can draw more of those entrenched units further south, that would be ideal. We just still can't push over to Zaporizhia just yet. Nice. Look at this. We might be able to get a good encirclement here. We might be able to connect up near Poltava. Nice. Oh, dude. We actually might get a massive encirclement there. Get Budin off and Zuluzhny to encircle them around. Nipro, right, another eight elite divisions coming in. Because they've now been Western trained. Okay. As we hit December now, 23. So it's winter. It's probably nice and hard enough. It's not that m muddy slush situation. Oh, nice. We might be able to get a massive encirclement in here. Look at this. We've really got him on the back foot. Okay, we're still a little bit gridlocked down here. <gasps> oh, wow, what? The, uh, they've rebelled. <laughs> okay. Does that change things? They've hit nearly 1.1 million. Oh, here we go. We've got the, um, march to Moscow. Alright, so hang on. Is that chain... Wait, what? Why can't we move... Huh? Oh, wow. Okay. So, I guess you need to survive as long as this. There's no, like, territory taken. We can't move into that northern territory. Oh, wait. Hang on. This is a massive opportunity. We have to go, go, go and attack all fronts. We can't move military forces, which looks like to be in Sumi, Chernihiv, and a little bit of Poltava. So, yeah. Throw everyone to the Kharkiv, the Dnipro point. We can use this as a massive opportunity. I think units got distracted somehow. Yeah, like units have been pulled off the front there. Oh my god, we gotta go then. We gotta go, 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 go. Use this initiative. Meet up with <laughs> Wagner in uh, Rostov on Don, I guess. Okay, so we've managed to take out 500k of them. Nice. And we've lost 600 of our own. Alright. We need to use this. Unfortunate political position for them. If we can somehow, like, cut them off there, that's what we need to do. Okay, so that means everyone can push further south. He was already on the offensive, but we might be able to, if we could just, like, get a massive encirclement here, it's probably GG's. So, from the brink of defeat, we've probably managed to come back here, and now this is, like, completely disorganized. And look at this, we're about to get a massive encirclement here. Okay, still struggling to push over from Herson and Zaporizhia, but we're doing a lot better here in the north. Yes, there's a lot of territory that we can't get into. Kharkiv has been liberated. Nice. Okay, so they're sitting at 1.1. Look at this. 
A massive surge in counter-offensive. As our mechanized and armed forces are flooding in. Yeah, like, try and retake Mariupol. And to Melitopol. If we can focus on top, uh, top Mac, Melitopol, and uh, Mariupol, that would be massive. There are Belarus units there, but they're not doing anything. Cross the Dnipro. Let's go. Um, man, this would be so much easier if we had air power. Look at this. Oh, we're really pushing them back now. Nice. Go, 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 go. We have to use this. Wow. They actually threw because of Wagner. Okay, they are starting to reallocate some of their forces north. There's like one unit here. Hang on. Just get rid of it. There we go. It was like tying units there. Nice. We still haven't been able to push over from Zaporizhia. Oh my god. Here we go. Oh, wow. We're really going... Just because we've been able to focus on the south so much easier. We're across the Dnipro now. Uh, we can't go with rebuilding. I guess we go with Crimea because we are getting towards that region. Nice. There we go. We've got them massively on the back foot. A lot of this is not being defended. If we can cut them off here, that would be ideal. Go, 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 go. Sever the land bridge. The boys. The boys are doing it. Um... We can get rid of Duga. <laughs> okay. Uh, sure. I guess we do that. That's an option. They're still holding Zaporizhia, though. As we're about to cut them off here. There we go. Should we cry me up? It's January now, 23. We're in a really good position. I haven't reallocated those rail guns, but I don't think we need to. It's fine. We also haven't spent a bunch of our army experience. There's some stuff we can min-max, but... What are we even using? Okay, a lot of equipment we just sort of seized. Interesting. Okay. Um, this is really good. I think we're good here now. I can't see us losing from this position. Unless they reallocate. We use the... Uh, mutiny to our advantage. It drew so many units off the front line. There we go. And then try and go to Kerch and Krasnodar. Everyone's on a, like offensive action. Nice. Mariupol has been now liberated. And this is massive. There is a bunch of units caught here in Zaporizhia. We've sort of stopped here. The counter-offensive is really working out. Okay. Like, grab everyone and try and crush this. There is a massive contingent here. It's ballooned to 1.3 mil. Okay, make sure you get rid of you. Okay, so they have actually pushed me in Mikolaev. Ooh, hang on. We're doing so well, we need to watch out for here. Let's reallocate you. Man. What a fun mod. Yeah, I think you just sort of have to take it on the chin a bit. Being on the defensive in some points. you got to pick your battles wisely. Your offensives and pushes. Highly recommend this mod. I'm surprised you could even call this a beta. It's pretty fleshed out. Okay, let's reorganize this. There we go. If we can basically take the peninsula from the behind across these units see they've been overextended okay our equipment has gone shocking nice okay what's happening here there's still a bunch of units in Zaporizhia keep pushing them to try and waste that supply um things have really stabilized there though okay we just need to make sure this push is successful Nearly hitting 1.3 now. If they just kept on going, they might have been able to... Hold on out. We've got 114k. Oh, okay. We've just crushed so many of divisions. <laughs> They've got a minimum of 200 now. We probably have more divisions than them. It's just adding up those losses. Like... They, uh... I fought to the absolute bitter end here in Zaporizhia. Okay, so we missed. 
Uh, victory in the east. Wait, what? Did the game just freeze? Nope, we're good. Oh my god. My frames. Alright. So. Still haven't cleaned off the last of them in Zaporizhia. What is happening? My frames are dying. It's hit 1.4 million. The counter-offensive is working. We've nearly liberated all of... Um, Zaporizhia Oblast. There we go. Look at this. There's 21 divisions there that can't get out. They're sitting on the island. So that's going to be a massive chunk. Like, I wonder how many units are just in there. Uh, more troops have arrived. Um, I don't think I want to hit the bridge. Because we want to try and cross it, potentially. Nice. There we go. We're starting to flank them from behind massively here. With Melitopol and Borodansk under our control. Uh, what's happening here? Um, you don't have a front line. Because we have been struggling to push over that Mikolaev region. Okay. Um, where were those elite forces? Pfft, maybe here. Just chuck them over here. It's fine. Things have slowed down. In the east. Oh, we can't even... Wait, what? We can't move into... Kharkiv now? Why? That's bizarre. Okay. Maybe that was the calculation stuff. We had it. Okay. Yeah. Need to go for Simeon of Pole. Whatever it is. Ooh, okay. We might need to redraw that front line. If we can surround them there in the south. 1.4. Okay, look at this. We're nearly like 98%. Restored. We got to about 60% towards capitulation. So let's redraw this. Because we don't want to get pushed back from this really good position we now sit in. Yeah, so we've got some units there that are exiled. Okay. Yeah, a lot of this territory we just can't go into, which is a bit weird. Alright, so let's reform something like that and start to threaten, which you would consider historically their core territory. So let's try and go all the way back there. I don't know how far we need to push. Alright, down in the south, still struggling to push over. Oh, wait, so we can't actually just put it to Crimea. Okay, that's weird. So maybe we just need to draw it like here then. Interesting. So we can take our own... We can draw stuff on our own territory, but not so much on theirs. So maybe we need to draw it a bit better here. Hang on. Like here. We've got them on the back foot, so we'll just initiate the plan. We're not going to wait for time and preparation. We're good. I would have thought we would have expended a bunch more artillery and uh, rocket artillery pieces. We've just got a bunch in stockpile that we didn't really end up using. We didn't need to. Didn't need to make full-on artillery divisions just to hit their counter batteries. I think their tanks and stuff were the most issue. I thought their aviation would have been more of an issue as well. And maybe amphibious attacks. But it's all good. They got us at a couple points. But you just got to not sort of sweat it and take your time. <laughs> a cool, calm, balanced. Balance between attack and defense. We've still got that division that's been like on that little peninsula there. On that little, well, it was an island, little strip there. Nice, here we go. Alright, so we've actually got some forces entering the Crimean Peninsula. Push! Let's go, lads. Let's liberate the Tartars! <laughs> oh my god. Okay, there's going to be an absolute mass encirclement there. Nice. We're back to convoy raiding down here. 
Um, oh my god, we're only a couple tiles away from Donetsk city itself. Nice, here we go. Cutting off that supply, yep, and then go for this. Go, 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 go. Alright, ladies and gentlemen, I think we got him. Nice. 1.5. Things are looking a lot better. Yep. Keep going. Basically cut off that supply to those guys over the border in Mikolaev. Alright, there we go. Nice. Um, we just need to move to the port of Sevastopol. We can't even start rebuilding yet because we haven't got peace, I guess. Um, the Ukrainian Caesar. <laughs> um, is that Zeluzhny? <laughs> Seems to be like that, particularly in this series. Is there anything else in, in this focus tree we can do? Some of the stuff we missed, but that's alright. Phew! I think we're good now. Man, things got a little bit hairy. 1.5 million, yikes. There we go. We've nearly liberated the entirety of the peninsula. And we've still got like a million manpower spare. Oh, we are struggling to push here a little bit though. We're doing so much better in the south of the country. Yeah, just try and go for this. Uh, make sure that all of the peninsula is fully under our control. That's been successful, nice. Oh, it's like fully under our control. Perfect. All right. So, because we didn't target the bridge, the Kerch Bridge, we can probably just move over there now if we need to. So, we've got like 72 divisions just here. <laughs> Let's go for there and then try and cross over to Krasnodar, Rostov, Vondon. We'll see. Let's push there. Okay, our equipment has gone to 24%. At, at one point when we were getting like a bunch of Western aid in, that's probably what made the difference. We were laughing. Ugh, okay, so we're actually struggling to push over here now. Kerch has been liberated. Interesting. I guess we can try and purchase some more stuff where we can. Um, can we push like fully over here or do we need to move them back? 1.6 million. Alright, so even with them um, attacking us a year earlier, we've been good. Let's try and make sure we grab all these little tiles here. We've got 91 divisions just sitting here. Um, can we not cross the border? What's going on there? Uh, no, it's not allowing me to... Wait, can't even cross here? Bit weird. Well, hang on. Calculating peace conference. What? There's a bunch of divisions I want to crush. In her son, or is he about to sign a white piece, maybe? Oh no, here we go, Ukrainian victory. Victory in the south, we've won. After years of fighting, we've won. They've discussed an official end to the conflict. Alright. Slava Ukraini, 6th of May 23. So we didn't even get to December of this year. Nice, so does that mean all that territory that we lost is now ours? The Treaty of Kiev? Yep. All of our territory is now back. So Donetsk, Luhansk, Kharkiv, yep. And Crimea as well. Nice. Dude. We've just... <laughs> we've got so many forces. Like... What would stop us just after that just going all the way to Moscow? <laughs> oh, wow. Well, unfortunately on that note, it's probably time to... Wrap up the series here. Phew. We won. Um, I've had an absolute blast. I hope you've enjoyed. Uh, let me know feedback and suggestions in the comments. I'm sure there's stuff we could have min-maxed. Let me know, backseat gamers. Let me know. But at the end of the day, we won. I think that wasn't too bad for my first playthrough on the beta. For all intents and purposes. At some points, we could have... Very well lost. <laughs> anyway, thanks guys. Um, maybe I should do some more on this mod. Or maybe I should look to see if there's any other similar mods 
like this. Yeah, let me know feedback and suggestions. Maybe I could play as the other side. I don't know. Anyway, thanks for watching. Like and subscribe, all that good YouTube stuff. My name is Ben Simpsy. I'll see you in the next one. Thank you so much. Uh, Slava Ukraini.